go, I, I, I went to Alba, I said, why were you wearing one of those? And then Albert goes, look, Krabs, it's not as easy as a three-word slogan, all right? And uh, oh, <laughs> and another thing, there's rumour going around that uh, at your Enmore show, I was snorting cocaine with you boys. And uh, you know what? That's not cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. This beautiful Tuesday. I know that. I don't know the date. We have some old friends here, some old mates. We got Pat. We got Krabs. We got Nelson. We got old the fans. old, old faithful here. Yep. And we are here today to talk about. You probably see it better on the tape on the fucking table. But Belly of the Beast, the new ish <laughs> book. <laughs> Thanks very Wait, much for having truly, us, fellas. Um, yeah, no, cheers. welcome, boys. Welcome. I didn't realize that um, that the potty stayer now that the exclusive shit before was the the Spanish shit story and the microwave babies. We'll to, we'll, yeah, we'll have to. I reckon we should have to. Yeah, we'll they got to do that again. We're gonna do that again. We're gonna do that again. We'll have to throw mm. some of that in there again. I I forgot too, to be honest, bro. <laughs> That's why I think that we should just not give this one out to podcast. And I think that we should have a discussion about business matters on the podcast, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Everyone's Did everyone bring their tax returns? <laughs> When's the last time like, you... Come you on, these guys don't do tax. When's the on. last time you've been in a fight, Jordan? <laughs> When's the last time you've been in a fight? <laughs> what kind of fight? Mentally? Where, where, where he's like, <laughs> fuck you, and throwing a punch. No, I think the last time was when Yilmaz threatened to fight me and I cried and it was just like, what a bitch and walked away in disgust. I, think that was all. That, I don't think I've ever end. fought anyone ever. That's the manly response though. That's how most of my fights end. <laughs> it makes <laughs> you feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys get in the punch-ups? Just with each other. Yeah. On wow, on that's <laughs> healthy. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Sometimes on stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On stage. Yeah, our last show in Hamburg actually. Yeah, Dylan smashed a drum stool into my head. <laughs> What? Um, yeah, because he um, <laughs> Jerry Spring alive. What's he? It was. Well, it was we, exactly Be- that. Beaker Beaker was sick. He had tinnitus, and so we had Elliot from the Delta Riggs playing the drums. And he thought we were going into Rum Rage, which doesn't have drums. So he went out back for for a cigarette. But then Dylan just started singing, "I wish I could disappear." And like thirty seconds into that song, um, the drums are supposed to come in, but he kind of walked off. And so I kind of just started singing it. And then when the drummers came in, there was just like the worst sounding bongo, my, sad Milo tins falling down a staircase. And I turned around and Dylan was on the drum kit. It's like just intentionally just like wind up monkeys. Like, <laughs> and this was the last show of the tour. And there was like a lot of pent up. Yeah, just things every, get a bit just, hairy. It's everything. Just I like, can imagine. It's everything. How long did so, it go for? Like I, eight I, I could hear Seamus, Seamus' squawk and seagull voice going, oh, fuck, rock and roll drums. He was on the other side of the stage and just like, <laughs> Krabs did this and so we all stopped playing and then I, I turned around to Diz like on the drum kit and like had this pretty like serious somber moment where like I was talking to him but like I wasn't talking to a mic, it was just me and him and I was like, respect the band, respect the fans, either get back on the microphone and sing this song or get the fuck off the oh, stage. And then I, I thought he'd gone like, because he did, he went, and then he stood up and just sort of smashed me in the head with the drums. <laughs> and, um, and then just like, <laughs> And musicians can't fight, so it just looks really pathetic. I don't know if you saw the Brian Jonestown massacre last week. I, and I heard about mm. that in Melbourne. Yeah, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> just like Anton smashes that guitarist in the head with his guitar, <laughs> but then gets scared, and then the guitarist is like chasing around the stage, and the tambourine man falls over his fold back. It was a bit like that. Like, yeah, it was brewing as well because I went to the Ed Moore show, and you could see like that uh, one of the other guitarists just sort of looked over at Anton and just went, "Fuck you." And just stormed off stage. And I just thought, these blokes are like 57, 58. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry at that yeah. point. <laughs> Go home to your family, This eh? is exactly yeah. us How on stage right that now? tour? Like, all it's the people in the room that, like, hate each other. Like, yeah, this will go well. Let's go to Australia. Like, like they, got, they got nothing else going on. Like, I guess do it again. It's, <laughs> it's probably a uh, book, sober, play, drunk effect. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, look, alcohol... Would have a huge part in it. Yeah. It's rock and roll, though, right? It's rock and roll. Like, yeah, musicians can fight each other because, like I said, they don't know how to fight, so no one actually gets hurt. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, another time, Dylan and myself um, uh, ended up in this like fight, like down the aisles of um, uh, a certain airline's plane mid-flight, and then um, 
our producer w- was there because it was just Dylan and myself and our producer was there trying to like, it was after we were flying back from recording West Wayne, Thailand. And um, the captain apparently, while the plane was on autopilot, like spoke to our friend Dan and sort of said, look, I would have had to have landed the plane, but technically it wasn't a fight because not a single punch was landed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, just, like, <laughs> just these pa- pathetic, no, pathetic weak losers, man. Like, <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> But and to, I, I don't even remember this happening. <laughs> you would have been so close. It's the, a plane. How did yeah. you miss? I don't know. It's not it, a boxing ring. You can't run around. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> and I don't, yeah, I, I got told all this by Dan later. I didn't even remember it happening. <laughs> but the plane landed and there was this fella in a suit. Um, and uh, Dylan, I think Dylan must have forgotten too because we were just like walking together. What's well, some ASIO guy? What's that? What, what's, who's the suit? Uh, just somebody from the airline who was waiting for us in that tunnel thing. Okay. And, um, Border force. And... Um, yeah, and then he said, oh, Mr. Frost, Mr. Cornwall. Like, yeah, and he was like, yeah, you're banned from Qantas. Oh, whoops. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dizza goes. Insert ah. generic car. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Dizza's response was, I don't give a shit. I fly a virgin anyways. And then um, just walked off into the sunset without a bruise or a scratch. I, I think mean, I'm that is such <laughs> a handicap, being a band and being banned from the national carrier. I mean, it's like, dude, they, the Virgin doesn't fly to a lot of these places. <laughs> it's kind of fun. The glory days are over too, man. The cheese toasting machines, where the fuck are they? Yeah, I know. It's bullshit. Wait, yeah, wait, don't get that? me started on Quintish. Wait, wait, I don't know. Uh, tell me about that. What's that? Cheese See, toasting you machines? wouldn't know this, miss, because no, you're not I'm, a high-flying no, celebrity I'm, type I'm, like I'm us. I'm not. I'm just a pleb. But like, what do you... He, uh, dude, I just started being able to get into the Virgin <laughs> VIP and I'm like, dude, those coffee... As a guest. Yeah. Nevertheless. Uh, hey, right, wait, come on. Before that, were you guys going into the chairman's lounge at Qantas or... No, you get any special treatment there? No, I, I was just trying to mourn the the cheese toasty uh, making facilities of the the glory days of the Virgin Lounge. Oh, mm. okay, yeah. that's what you were talking about. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I was talking about some fancy than that, but continue. Yeah, I wasn't actually talking about Qantas, um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, cheese toasty. It's is so sick. good. Like all the all the worst corporations hate you, and that means you're doing something right. Like getting <laughs> getting beam from Qantas, I'm so happy about. I dare say that's something that you guys might have in common, uh, and I reckon that it's worth pointing out that there are some uh, pretty strong similarities between the uh, stories of Stickies and Jordan, uh, and I think. You know, these guys have known each other for a long time, went to school together. I think it's um, that their the stories might be a bit more common than you might think. So I think that, first of all, you guys are both independent success stories coming out of Newtown High, class of 2007, to be specific. True. That's right. Crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. You You're, don't have to mention that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're both... Uh, Independent, you've both taken your mates along with you on the road, giving people like Miss Love and me a much appreciated free ride. Yes, but you guys have much more mates than me. This is this is it. <laughs> and we get we uh we get we get death threats, but no one's actually tried to kill us. Yeah. Um, well, that well that's the last one, uh, which which could be connected to that, is that uh, according to some of the reliable Australian media, including pedestrian TV, you're both racists. Yeah. yeah all facts there. Yep. Yeah. Badge of honour. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, and true as well. And um, I've got to say this as well, Pat. I think the funniest footage I've ever seen in my life is you mouthing off on Triple J. We still talk about it to this very day. We can't find it anywhere. And you've, it, it, you just you hooked us on meth. And then you cut off our supply. Can I? Can How I? How dare you? Can I give I, you a bit? I, of, I've got it here if you want to see it. I want to. See, can yeah, can yeah. we just play it? Because everyone needs to see this. Is can I give you some context as well? Because you know that Hamburg fight we were talking about. That was the same tour of the Triple J rant. So, Pat, oh my Pat God, was, it all happened Pat here. wasn't. Let's just say in the best state throughout the tour, and he was mumbling, bumbling around with a cane. <laughs> He yeah, bought okay. some little BMX bike for okay. about two thousand euro. Well, I, I got I got hit by a car in Philadelphia, and then rather than actually seeing a doctor, I, I was just medicating myself with Xanax, and I, I bought like I'm gonna buy a cool cane. And, um, <laughs> but this was like the triple, <laughs> the triple a new town way of medicating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by cane, cool looking band aid. 
Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, got exactly. a wolf head, cool. Where was this? So, so this rant was on what the boat from Liverpool to Dublin or something, wasn't it? And, and the no, it was, first it was Guinness English, was poured at seven a.m. French Channel crossing. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, same shit. Yeah, fuck your guys' oh. lives are fun. We did, we did. So, like you, you know, just before we get into that video, I've just got to make this point because <coughs> Miss and I have been talking about this a lot ever since we heard that you were coming on the pod. So as as you said, this is a long six month stint that we've been thinking about this. <laughs> I swear to God, like, rock and roll isn't what it used to be, man. And, like, you guys are the last rock band. Like, who else does drums and guitars and is successful these days? Like, not on Central Station. Who's doing it? I'm glad you mentioned the music side first. You know, we're not the... No. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the You other guys still get fucked up. I've, I've found... I've, I've located and do it well. I've located the video. Um, I'll just do it like this. Stand by your words, Paddy. Bullshit. And you're a bunch. Oh, shit. Wait, 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 wait. No, you can't. Just, we've got to. We go. oh, I wish we could show the people. Because you play fucking. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. It goes for longer than that. <laughs> it in, does. So did we see like two. an edited version, did we? Hang on. Here it is. Just give me one second. Oh, my God. This is like once upon a time in Hollywood. There's a five hours director. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That no one else has the fucking cojones to say in Australia if you're a musician or an artist, Triple J. Fuck you and your fucking artist repertoire. We don't fucking need you, we don't want ya because you play fucking bullshit and you're a bunch of fucking maggots, okay? Over here in the UK, doing what we fucking do, you can do what you fucking do. Stay in your corner, stay in your fucking lane. <laughs> And then <laughs> Where did the cane, the cane. What is what, the cane? That was just pure artistic inspiration at the end. The cane just knock. Smashing your own phone. Is that what happened at the end? You're just like, oh crap, I needed that. Like <laughs> the cane KO. Look, I was just a bit. <laughs> the cane KO'd it. I was definitely like in a, a very heightened um, version of myself that I can turn into from time and again. Um, I was also definitely like having. I, I just I was having fun. You know, the thing I didn't consider was that. Um, all my bandmates were just like sleeping and they were just going to wake up to this absolute shit storm. Um, oh God. So like, what the fuck have you done? And I was like, uh, yeah, someone had to do it. <laughs> so are you just the problem of all social media ills? Because it seems like 50% <laughs> of your stories always end in and then I posted something on Instagram at 3 a.m. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've gotten better. Have you gotten better over the years? I think so. Better look, at posting? I, yeah, look, better or worse, because I honestly think that that was just, that, that's the best piece of Australian content since the castle. Thank that you. was amazing. Thank you. And mm. just a great message as well. And you said it better than Cursor did. This, this was a cool <laughs> thing that I liked about Stickies and Cursor, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of both, was that you actually did literally putting the middle finger at Triple J. Would that have been possible before that camera phone existed? You'd be done. You'd, you'd, you'd be working at Woolies. Well, that's actually kind of what got us linked to like this whole Western Sydney community that we didn't actually know worked. It was actually that video that almost, in a way, was the rippling effect that ended up getting chilling it as a support on, on, on the, the arena tour. tour. Who, who's the main support on the book? Mm. What's that guy like? And don't worry, you can bitch about him. I'm sure it won't go. He's best the best. Lebanese limousine. He's the <laughs> he's the the, the 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 kung fu cucumber. Um, he's a sicko. He's a lot. He's a lot. He's he's a He's very fast, like he's um he's hard to keep up with, but he's fiercely loyal. He's a family man these days. He is, but um he, he tried to he got asked to do like a version whilst he was on tour with us. Yeah, and he told Triple J to suck a dick from memory. <laughs> well, because he want yeah he he said he wanted to cover how to fly, and then they said well you can't do like a version. Yeah, so shout outs to Chill for that one. Absolutely. Wow, what a guy. Yeah. Mm. Well, you stood in your corner. You did. Mm. When uh, few That's others awesome. would. A few others would, exactly. But isn't it amazing that you see it? It's just like, it's Cursor, you guys, and chill in it. And you've done the almost impossible, which is stick around in music. Well, perhaps That's there's not- something to that, that a lot of these bands that were getting propped up in this kind of false economy are not around anymore. And perhaps that to have the kind of fan base that is loyal enough to, you know, withstand that kind of pressure and, you know, that kind of agenda it, that 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 might not be a coincidence i mean you you yeah. do it as well right i mean you you give the are you, the, are you, mid, the middle finger my life didn't revolve around sucking richard kingsmill's cock <laughs> yeah yeah which is 99 percent of musicians in 
this country. Yeah. Uh, my question to you was, are you cancelled? Are you considered cancelled? Are they trying to cancel you? Where Where are you at with it? Because with us, like, like we're cancelled, but for us, it's kind of like herpes. You can only get cancelled once, and it's very... It's just very liberating because now we can say and do what we want. We can say "fuck you," Triple J. We can, uh, you know, put a baby in the in the microwave. Um, There's a freedom of expression. And, you know, put up a cover of Ocean Alley's confidence. A Serbian film. To it, yeah. We we can like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we still have our fans. You know, th- those who like us still like us. Those that don't definitely don't now. And it's just like. We just carry on and it's all yeah, good. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, I think it's also, um, yeah, if, really quickly, if you're making like comments on at three in the morning, you know, like we've got to be better at responding to that too, you know, like obviously, you know, it's, you're going to be pretty fucked up when you're doing it. You know, you don't have to take everything verbatim and just say, oh, you know, this or guy's. F- or maybe if it's international. He, well, hang on. Sorry. No, you go, 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 go. Go. It's just like I'm. Don't crab walk back what Patty did there. That was <laughs> <laughs> I did a little side step there, didn't I? Music video clip yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, something which has interested me in both of you guys getting cancelled, if you will, is uh, the fact that you are both completely independent and not tied to a corporation. So, Jordan, you were um, uncovering... Uh, if you will, some kind of dirty deeds that were uh, not done dirt cheap. And Paddy, you've always been independent, which I think means that the industry might not, might have felt that they were missing out on a bit of a cut of the profit or perhaps even felt that you were taking a slice directly out of their pie. So I wonder if there may be some sort of correlation between these kind of targeted media campaigns and whether they might have something to do with money and, and, and how much, like, you know, finances could have to do with some of these mainstream media narratives. Well, do you think that was the case? Did you guys have, like, some kind of pseudo-independent deal going where you weren't taking this, like, 90-10 split? That well, we, we've, we've had pretty much every label in the country, like, offer us a deal and we've just sort of said no. Mm. Yeah, like yourself, we're, we're fully independent. Like, outside of Miss Love and Ali, shout Ali. Like, who else actually makes cash off you who aren't in this room? Well, th- this is the room. This is the room. An undisclosed yeah, yeah. location. The fish <laughs> live off me as well. Yeah. And the, the lizard, the, the snake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's not you, Ali. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. You've got to write the first shot. <laughs> I don't care what they say. Can I, can I, uh, I wanted to throw you guys some, my, because uh, I read the book. My oh, you favorite. can read. I can read now. It was, these are my favourite quotes from the book, so I was going to read them out and then, like, get your thoughts on the quotes. What do you reckon? Love it. You down? Into it. Love because, it. Because, yeah, we sort of talked about... We, I totally forgot that we have a pre-show. <laughs> so I was, like, covered a sh- bunch of shit before. But uh, obviously Nelson wrote the book. How, tell us a little bit... Of, tell us a little about the process first, and I'll do that. How long, like, the tour, the state, like the, the stadium tour, all it, that. It sounds like it was just, see the movie Almost Famous. Yeah, very, yeah. very Next much question. the yeah. tour diary. <laughs> very, very much the tour diary movie, format. Yeah. <laughs> tour, the tour diary format we were running off, but perhaps in the style we were t- trying to, I was trying to maybe evoke a bit more of like the fear and loathing kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that was, and which is what. Yes, the, in the style of it. Yeah. Yeah, the cover was yeah. um, a, a kind of nod to Ralph Steadman, which is um, Hunter S. Thompson's uh, artist. Yeah, artist. And um, we, so we, that was a big inspiration for us. And, and we were, I think I was, um, Fear and Loathing is about, for the listeners, about a journalist who's hired to cover a story, um, which is the Mint 400, which is some race in the desert, and um, takes it upon himself to load up like a briefcase full of hallucinogens and various other narcotics. And then to he ends up covering something else entirely. So I think... In a, in a strange way that that's kind of what ended up happening as well, using that as an inspiration. I was covering this kind of triumph, which was, you know, the, the whole industry and, you know, the, the mainstream media largely, you know, coming against this band and trying to, trying to stop them and block their path and then managing to pull out this record-breaking tour where, you know, they've, they've never had independent acts sell out these venues it's insane it is incredible especially <coughs> from australia mm. Mm. Ah, yeah. 
pretty sure it was all thanks to your promo video you made for us back in 2000. Uh, can I say thank you? I needed ten. that money. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we paid you this show so far. You've got, I'm pretty sure, like, Jordan had, had, his, had his 80 bucks sound. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, hey, that sounds great. 80 bucks, <laughs> 80 bucks in a case. <laughs> That's like one schnitty <laughs> now. Get a case. Do, you, yeah. do you remember the video that you made? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember. Australia, land of pleasure. Oh, Wait, how did you guys yeah. go in it? I can't remember. Uh, this was back before Triple J. Yeah, we, the, we, uh, we got in. We got in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then? And then Number uh, 99. And then out. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it like in the Triple J studio? What is that like? I would imagine the uh, feeling would be most equated to being in East Germany in the 80s. <laughs> it feels... It just, <laughs> it's kind of like a PCYC, you know? There's like instant coffee and there's a pinball machine. Um Everyone's got a pigeonhole and, you know, packed lunches. I don't know. Everyone's it sounds like, bureaucratic as. It sounds like it's like they, they try to give off a vibe of just like, yeah, it's all chill and relaxing here. But I cannot imagine it being remotely. Judging from the fear of people being like, that was another tasty tune. Like, I, can't, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine you guys being in that environment. I, don't know, I guess we've had, you know, we've had varied experiences in there. Like when you're, when you're an artist... From the era of like you know, when did we bop out? Like mm. yeah, like in the in the twenty tens, mm. early twenty tens. You're just so ecstatic. Like, Holy fuck! They're playing my single on Triple J, and so you just like had this elated feeling kind yeah. of thing. Um, but then when you're just being just like sandbagged by Tom Tilly, that's obviously a very different experience entirely. Oh my god! And also talk about a knob. Yeah. But then also like Pat did the interview before. And then so like we already Tom Tilly interview me. Yeah, you kind of did the interview not with Tom Tilly, but with um, you know, Becker and Charlie or whoever. I don't know. <laughs> so so <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah. Bacon and eggs. Just random bacon, bacon and eggs. And, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and then they said, Yeah, just this wasn't suitable for the, you know, drive time radio. So you've got to come on hack. And then Tom Tilly basically spoke to what Pat on the phone and just kind of reassured him that, you know, we won't really yeah. But you were entering but then just the Billy's bees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah. What he fucked us. From yeah, it was, it was such a bad. Like that, that just mean, shows the naivety of us when we were young. That they were just like, oh yeah. Well, how would you like to do an interview on on hack with was, Tom Chili? <laughs> it yeah, was yeah, funny. That's, that's <laughs> the place where you go for bands. Yeah, when we, when we, Dylan, you, sorry, I was quickly, sorry, when, you Dylan, go, you go. when Dylan actually said, "Boys will be boys," I just thought at that moment I was like. Seeing all the little oh, pedestrian God. TV articles Jeez. coming up, <laughs> didn't he? Was, like, didn't he? Uh, from from memory, didn't <laughs> didn't um didn't Diz bless his cotton socks um turn to you crabs and say something to the effect of, "I just said the worst possible thing I could say, didn't I?" <laughs> Hang on, I, I was going to take this from the top because I don't think we've ever actually explained this before. Potentially, just because we couldn't be fucked. Um, so we we were recording yours to keep at the time, I think, mm. and then like. We kind of got made to feel like we had to do this hack interview and sort of interrupt our recording session. We had to all fly down and do this thing we didn't want to do. And then Dylan, who doesn't do interviews ever because he's just like the most introverted, shy dude you'll ever meet, like an off camera, off mic, let alone on a national broadcaster with somebody like Tom Tilly saying, what do you got to say for yourself? <laughs> um, yeah. So our manager hired this, this Kevin Boxhead character to come and visit us at the studio to try and give him this media training. And he was like, he was this older bloke with like, a, he looked more like a criminal lawyer with like this lockjaw mentality. And he's like, a, he, he had these electric- Perfect guy. He had these electric blue eyes, but just like, he looked more like a boxer or like an ex-cop. <laughs> and he was like, mate, you know, if, if it comes up, mate, that um, they ask you about you and the boys, like, Fighting each other, just say boys will be boys, you know. Like you know, boys be boys. Like, like you, 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 you and Patty, your brothers. So you've had a, you've copped a few whacks on the chin amongst, you know, boys be boys amongst each other. And so Dylan actually had this piece of paper in the studio of the hack interview that had um, this all these answers to particular questions, just to sort of help him along. And so then, like Tom Tilly asked him something about a certain allegation, and Dylan just like looked down. Just like the first thing he saw was boys will be boys. So like, if you were in the studio, which we were, you could. You could visually see Dylan look down and just like point at this piece of paper and go, oh, boys will be boys. <laughs> oh and it was God. just like the perfectly wrong answer for the question. And there, there was this moment where like Tom Tilly, <laughs> his eyes just like went wide, like hit, yeah. Like uh, <laughs> hit, yeah. And like look around and, and I saw him like look over beyond us to the, the producers beyond the glass. Glass. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then I, at that point, it was a pre-record, right? So at that point I turned 
and I addressed the producers and said, you all saw what happened there. You guys all know that that's not what he meant to say. Mm, mm. That but cannot, hacks being the hacks. So that yeah, that, that cannot be in the interview. So I addressed it there and then, and yep. then we went back into talking and we were actually in there for a good hour talking and then like what everybody actually heard was this highly edited 20 minutes. Yep. They fully cut out the, the, the part where Krabs was like, you're going ballistic at Mr. Tilly at one stage. Like, how fucking dare you? Like, yeah, that was like a, that was you, you were really defending Dylan because he was really going in on Dylan and you could see that Dylan was like just trembling and just like really just like, mm. like backed into a corner and like having like a massive freak out. <laughs> yeah. And so you came in and backed him and then in that moment he was somewhat apologetic too. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. So this, this it's all going to make sense now. But then I remember afterwards the part you were talking about, Nelson, was then after we finished the interview, we came down, Dylan like lit this, this cigarette and he was like, I really fucked it up, didn't I? It was just like, <laughs> and we were kind of like, it's all no, right, buddy. No, of course. Oh, we, we, we were like, well, yeah. In, in well, Dylan's it's coming. Well, Tom, Tom Tilly came up at the end and shook my hand and was shaking everyone's hand. He came up with this big grip and just goes, sorry, they made me do it. And I just yeah. thought like, fuck. And I was like, shit. And wow. That is an incredible And I was insight. like, all right, all right. That's so good. See, now, this is just a little <laughs> message for all the kids there. If you ever do get interviewed on any mainstream outlet ever, make sure you record everything. Mm. That is get a good point. Because if, really if we had had the, the wisdom to actually record it ourselves as well. Yeah, because Hack fucked me as well. They do, they do, really? Yeah, of course. They, they are like exactly yeah, I don't know that. why I'm surprised by that actually. propagandist, huh? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure why I was surprised. Really? <laughs> could yeah, they? This oh. man. How could yeah. they? <laughs> Oh, the fuck you too, mate. He told it down the line. <laughs> Couldn't possibly be true. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Tom then the, the, of all people. The, the last little bit was that then, um, you know, our, our manager followed up with what I said, saying, mm. yeah, Dylan clearly didn't mean to say boys, we boys, in correlation with the question that was asked in that moment. But then their response the next day was, uh, we've decided Dylan didn't actually speak. Enough. So we have to. Their point was that they had uh, to include it uh, because he hadn't uh, spoken uh, enough. Uh, and that Dylan's voice, they try to say, Must Dylan's voice heard. needs to be heard. <laughs> yeah. oh, triple J. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, so naturally at that what point in time, you know, savages. fuck you. Just naturally fuck you. <laughs> I just like yeah. that we hired political PR. <laughs> and it's just yeah, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> mate, and so, and so yeah, mate, yeah, just deflect the question, <laughs> say, boys, are we boys? <laughs> and get He's going to take it like a rug right hood. <laughs> it's still <laughs> 1981. And yeah. I think he was charging something stupid like 500 bucks an hour or something. Oh, yeah, well, he was worth his money. Like, because yeah. it's a good industry. Because if you got all these politicians about to, you know, they're cheating on their missus or something, and they're about to lose it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like they can charge whatever the fuck they want. Because yeah, I'll bloody save like, you, mate. Classical political answer of like, we'll, uh, you know, the, the current situation in 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 the, in the uh, vicinity of the area at the time, <laughs> I was not with the uh, the uh, <laughs> you know the the subject at the present time. It's like, well, you're not saying anything. <laughs> you know? yeah, I, I wish Miss Love was your lead singer. He would know exactly how to handle that situation I don't know entirely. That. He I don't know. Waffled on for an hour you've, with those kinds. You've of clearly like you've clearly cop. hired the actual <laughs> political strategist guy because. <laughs> That, he that does, he does, he good. vibes it out. He knows He knows the tone of what the people want. It's a, he is the everyman, you know? Like, <laughs> Wait, he so knew you, Trump was going to win. He's so that the, kind of guy. The strategy is just to bore the fuck out of everybody. Uh, so uh, at the end yeah, of the yeah, day, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we're say mo vicinity. moving forward at yeah, the yeah. end of the day. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. You don't exactly. answer right. anything. That's it. All right, from now on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That, yeah. Well, well, shout outs to, to Tom Tilly if you want to have them back. They're ready this time. Yeah. You'd be desperate enough for the ratings. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me get my quotes in. I'm trying to be a, media, a moderator here. For top four quotes from the book. And this might fall into what we we're just saying. The first one, life is a laugh or cry situation. Yeah. I think that's pretty appropriate. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was Jimmy, our tour manager. Yeah. Did he say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know what I mean? When shit hits the fan a lot of the time, like those are your options or they seem to be the best options. You know what I mean? Life is a laugh or cry situation. Yeah. Yeah. What um, do you do? Bit of both. <laughs> Most <laughs> crying. <laughs> Bit of both. Uh, all right, but then I'm going to hit you with the, yeah, so this is the second one that I thought was cool. This is about, obviously, the band. The band. The band. The band. Uh, there are artists <laughs> who keep drawing from the same well and those who keep searching for the accidental feeling they got the first time. Yeah, so That's, I think that was a, uh, was a that Dan Hume. That was actually a Dan Hume right. quote um, explaining uh, how he saw 
stickies perhaps against some of the other bands that are pa- – a lot of them might be, uh, like, signed to a record label, like where yeah. where I think um, they might be uh, given a bit more direction and, and have perhaps a little bit less creative freedom with their sound. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think you guys have always – uh, managed to push your sound for, from starting with that kind of reggae infused rock. You've explored a cocktail of sounds, but actually, while we're on that, I, I actually believe that you guys have done the same thing, and that's another parallel. Which is that Jordan? You know, you started with that <coughs> sketch comedy, mm. which um, was unreal, and and everyone loved it. And then you sort of segged into that. Uh, you know, very hard-hitting political satire with time. So I think if if I might take the question and throw it back at you both, w- how important would you say creative evolution is to you both? I wish it wasn't important. Man, I would like to just be peddling out the old ACDC classics, the same song <laughs> every <laughs> hour. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. D- don't you feel like we just grew up in an age where that is just not acceptable, that you spend 10 years mastering your art form, you do your little act, and you're like, ta-da, and everyone's like, yay. Now do something completely different. You're like, that show like, yeah, and they're just like, I'm bored. And you're like, no, 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 I can, I can keep dancing. But Juggling that's, with, like, look, chains. That's <laughs> the whole thing. I, I just don't, I'm not convinced people actually know what they actually want. If they're actually in touch with what they actually, what do you want? Like <laughs> before. The artist or the, or the audience? Punters. Like All before right. we were talking about Brian Jonestown Massacre in Melbourne last week and how the, the show ended with a fucking meltdown, which is like, if that band is anything that they've been consistent since the early nineties, like they, they're fully fucked. And like, it's been consistent, but then you get all these like ham sandwich motherfuckers in the comments like, oh, I had to drive from Barrel and stay in this hotel. And I uh, came and they played six songs and then the guitarist threw his guitar. And then, but this person, it's like, do you realize what band you're actually a fan of? Because <laughs> I think if, if, <laughs> if, if, you've seen, yeah. have you seen yeah. Dig, right? Yeah, what? right. Like yeah. if you really think about what you're attracted to, it's the chaos and I'm not trying to say the chaos is always necessarily like, you know, like people smashing each other in the head with their guitars, but like <laughs> it's, it's the, it's the, cha- it. the chaotic energy, which is like a big part of the music that is made too, or the sections that you make. Like you're, you're virtually like a, a gangster for your brain lad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, you know, thanks thug. lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Well, oh, are you a thug? Yeah, you are kind of a thug. Well, going how, back to how, how, beautiful, back how beautiful is it though? If you're snake and your fishies. <laughs> Like this, yeah, yeah. I was in the massage before, chair. This apartment looks like like Lefty's apartment in Donny Brasco. Hey, it never got made, you know. All it I got does, is the fishes. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> He's taking my prized possessions because I'm on the move a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, going back to sort of like giving the people what they want, uh, I feel like we're, we're on a pretty good uh, triple jerky kind of run here. So, Patty, do you want to tell the listeners about what? Triple J used to say to you guys at that early stages about your music and, and your sound and why they didn't want to play it? Okay, here's something that people don't know. Jordan, you probably like this. Is that um, I'm not sure if this is the case anymore. I think it's not. I think it's like send us a Dropbox link in terms of trying to get your song serviced. But back in the day, it was a thing where you had to get that elevator up there and you had to serve music in the flesh with, with a CD-ROM. Not a CD, right? Your CD-ROM, yeah. And um, wow. you have to like walk past all these big stacks of CDs and people sort of hidden amongst these towers of CDs and at the far right corner. And the walk is like a, like a good 10 meters to get over there. There's Kingsmill with his back to you. And he actually has like this rear view mirror, like one of those circular rear view goldfish styled mirrors. So you can see who's coming. And the, the first okay. two or three times that we took our own singles in, like it was a sort of like name, sticky fingers, like, yeah. And he'd like, put it on top of the pile <laughs> up here. So that was kind of that the experience. That spider is spirited away. He's just all these... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, G. <laughs> Finish what you started, human. <laughs> um, what was the question? Um, uh, so so it, it, when, when you were originally servicing, so going oh, through yes. that experience, visiting Kamaji. Right, right, right. Well, uh, was, eventually we got a three-word reply from Kingsmill after single four or five, which was how to fly, uh, and his... His email to us was, it's too reggae. Which is sitting at, I think, about 70 million views now on right. YouTube alone. So that if you try to if you try to pander to mm. 
what the people want, mm. then you end up like those bands we were referring to before that nobody knows who they are anymore. You know what I mean? That's such a good point. It's such a good point. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Tr- yes, a, a 50-year-old man has his pulse <laughs> on the nation of what the youth wants. To be <laughs> fair, to be fair to Kingsville, at the time for the music they were playing, it was too reggae. This was the period where there was all those really overweight blokes wearing really small Hawaiian shirts and banging bongos going hop, 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 like Vampire Weekend. Kind of hop, hop, ooh, do, 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 hop, hop. <laughs> and if you did that, that's how you got. Fun. I actually think, funnily oh, enough, the hell what? <laughs> I actually think, funnily enough, there are bands that have, like, let's say, ripped off, have been influenced by that, like, sound that originally wouldn't be led on Triple J and are now getting played on Triple J. So that, like, first yeah, EP okay. we did, yeah, like that was all the, you know, two reggae, and now you can just hear a bunch of bands that are pulling off that exact sound, and they're getting played. And I just think, like, what the fuck? That's incredible. So you guys kind of broke the ground in Australia for that. I mean, yes, you yes. know, <laughs> be the judge yourself. Turn on 105.7. And you're, on like you're trying to explore new avenues. Mm, I guess and so. Now, I mean, now, well, the Dan Hume out. Do your fans, when you do that, do they boo that? The, like, like, I don't know, Metallica just being like, now we'd like to trace them from a new album and everything. Like, <laughs> Fuck up. Like, <laughs> no, we've, that, we've been pretty lucky with that. Yeah, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Our fans are fucking sick. That's why none of this shit has really mattered because the the people that did come to our shows still come to our shows. Uh, the people that hated us were never going to start liking us at any point. So in a way, nothing has kind of changed. You guys both have, um, from my perspective, some of the most loyal kind of rabid ride or die fan bases that I've actually seen in Australia. Have you ever considered pitting them against each other to see what would happen? <laughs> yes, I'm sure my uh, do you mean like a, an arm wrestle? Very well against an arena of people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it really is the Spartan 300, isn't it? Are you are you boys are you boys gonna go watch Limp Bizkit tomorrow night? Oh, I wish, man. I I are you? You want to get you some tickets? Yes. You were chucking him on the Fuck last yeah, story. Bro. I saw that. I'd George. love to go. But, see but him. if I saw them now, will you actually come? Yeah. yeah. Where well, are they playing? I didn't even know they were playing. They're playing the Holden tomorrow. Holy I, I'm shit. I'm going to get one now as well, actually. All right, cool. That's, wait, that's, you that's, got, that's yeah, a deal. Wait, wait, wait. Have you got like Dawson? Any listeners out there, we're throwing away some free tickets don't, tomorrow to Olympus. Biscuit. Don't buy them for us. You're not going to buy them for no, us. I'll, I'll get you some spots. You, you got, you got door yeah, spots? Yeah, yeah. How the fuck do you have door spots to Limp Bizkit? Uh, we've played that venue a lot, I guess. So they'll let you... It's century venue, so it's the Horde and the Enmore, the Metro, Factory Theatre. Well, it's Holy a date then, fellas. Mate, I'm so, I, look, I'll be honest. I didn't know they were playing, but the first album I ever bought was Chocolate Starfish in the Hot Dog Flavor Water. It was, six. Oh, it was the first... It was, wasn't that, though. It was the first concert I went to as well. And I was 10 years old. That <laughs> was the year of um, Woodstock, which was pretty much yeah. like their yeah, yeah, yeah. most meteoric kind of moment. So I dare say that sounds like it's going to be a bit of a date, That's fellas. A date. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to come too, Ali? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> don't pretend you don't like Lean Parley. Come on. No, You're a fan? Lean. We yeah. were raised on a diet of limp. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. That's you look I mean. at you look at our playlist from back then, it would have been Limp Bizkit, Eminem, Linkin Park, and that would have been the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the staple. That's the staple. Vote, that's, that's so good. That's all the CDs you needed to own. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe Corn as well. Yeah, that's yeah, it. 100%. But maybe that's the way to do it, is just do some cool. really good albums, quit your career for about 20 years, get healthy again, and then just go and tour those three albums again. Are they healthy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they look pretty sick, man. Are they releasing new shit though? Like, is this is this are, is this a new release? I remember they did Gold be Cobra, a... which sucked. No, that you was know, their best album. Yeah, well, you, you're talking to a dude that his economy is joke. So if it's shit, he likes it. But, <laughs> um, but like, I remember when they came back, and um, Wes Ball. This is sad that I know this. I don't. Wes like, Ballin. Wes Ballin what a freak, said, "Man, hey, what a freak! He is a freak, beautiful he, freak. If you're yeah. watching, he's not watching. Is he watching? <laughs> I doubt it. But you know what he said? He said, um, we decided to come back because of like the shocking state of music today. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> music are you listening to? Yeah, but you need to be like to be that cool. <laughs> here, here, bro. That cool. <laughs> you need to be that out of touch as well. You know." Hey? To be that cool, yeah, oh, to be true. as cool as Wes Ball, and you need to be out of touch as Wes Ball. And yeah, 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 yeah. Like Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> the Wes Ball and of political commentary. <laughs> a Wes <laughs> Ball bag. Holy shit. Um, the last two quotes I had was, it's I mean, this one's, 
He's got like a self help channel too. So this one it says you have to, you have to always move forward, which is like vague as shit. But I feel like that's a uh, I feel I, I need that. I need to look at that. <laughs> I don't know, that one's kind of bad, but this one I like. The spirit of rock and roll lives in the now, uh, not in the recorded and replayed or written about. You truly have to be there. I think that's more just of a testament to live music though, right? And also I got a follow-up question to that. What the hell does that mean? I have no idea. I was so, like, who the fuck said that? No, I, there, <laughs> no. there's, there's no way You're I could- fucking wanker. There's no, way, there's no way I could have possibly written that. And I'm glad you've addressed it because I haven't read it yet. And what the fact that you guys have published that in my name, I, I'll see you in court. I delete no. this segment right now. No, no. What, I'm fucking serious. What, what I think it was... Matthew's hitting with a drum. <laughs> what I think it was, was like there is, there's certain music that is like studio music, um, and that's a lot of the rap which I listen to. It's, it's very stylized, and, and it's hard to uh, capture that sound in live. It's... it's it lives in the studio and on the radio or whatever. But for me, rock and roll has always been live music. Like it's about yeah. the kind of communal feeling with everyone there. It's about being there in that moment. And uh, I think for me, yeah, it was just, that was just my impression, I guess. I think I've got a really good call. segue for this yeah, moment. Because yeah, yeah. it, yeah. it, it is a huge achievement to do. Like it's your, is it your first book? Yeah, I've written another one, but I haven't published it yet. But okay. it's definitely been my dream for a long time. And the boys you just wrote "Wind in the Willows" accidentally, <laughs> 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 fucked around and uh, punched out "Wind in the Willows." But to <laughs> shout outs, Back shout out, off. shout outs to the boys, and particularly Paddy have always um, supported my writing for a long time. They've known that I've been chasing this for a, for a long while, and they have always had a model. I think where they you know, get their mates involved rather than working for a label right. where they you're directed to who you work with, do shoot this fit video, this guy's hot, you know, do this. The boys have actually... You are hot as well, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, that's taken care of. <laughs> All right, go on then. But <laughs> ultimately, I think the, the boys have actually started a lot of careers. A lot of our mates have gone on to start filmmaking careers. They worked on the videos. Um, a lot of artists that they've worked with have gone and had, you know, illustration careers. So... I think that was why Paddy wanted to give me a shot and the band wanted to give me a shot to um, to come and tell their story. Oh, man, so. you're, you're the funniest kind I know to this day. Thanks, bro. <laughs> and yeah. to answer your question, Miss Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who's rock and roll? Tell me. Anthony Albanese. Yay! Oh, yeah. Okay, Yay. yes, we have. That has to be covered. That, there he is, <laughs> the Prime Minister. <laughs> Mr. Hell. Speaker. So he always <laughs> looks so out of place with rock bands, but he's always in there being like, go to the rabbit right. age. There you go, have a look. Yeah. Great photo. Yeah. Yeah. Mind if I grab one more? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, brother. Someone, you got to tell us our story. Bro. Yeah, do you want to set it up, Pat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I'll Just set them up. You <laughs> with Anthony Albanese in between a bunch of shots of you guys Nelson with your Nelson. asses hanging uh, the out. The blue ones, is there any left? So oh, The greenies. Green. Thanks, bro. That's backstage at the Emmore <laughs> Theatre. And that was before he was the Prime Minister. He was the... DJ Albo. He was DJ Albo and he was the he's mayor. He was he was he was opening libraries at that stage. Yeah, he's kind of the mayor of he Marigold. Was, he was a he local a pair of scissors in his back a local pocket. minister, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was a local minister. Yeah. Oh, also, so, probably pretty important forward for this story as well. We love Albo. Albo is a total sure. sick cunt. Same man. Same. So like, we're not we're not trying to sandbag Albo at all. If this story It's just a funny story, um, he he um he was hanging backstage of us at, at the M War, and um, just. After we'd finished playing, I walked backstage to get a beer and there was no beers left in the fridge and Albo was like sitting there. So he didn't catch the last couple of songs for whatever reason, but he was sitting there with like quite a sizable amount of empty beers in front of him. And so I was like, oh, Albo drunk all our beers. But it wasn't like, fuck you, Albo. I was like, that's, that's sick. And so because it's Albo coming to our show, we were proud of that story. So we sort of like, you know, we weren't shy of telling people that Albo drunk all our beers. But then flash forward, like... Six months, um, Albo and Crabs were playing this AFL charity match called the Reckling Cup. Is yeah, it, it was oh, yeah, um, musicians yeah. versus music industry. Yes. Mm. Yeah, you know who you're going for. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> and anyway, there was Amnesty were involved, a bunch of other charities pushing their, you know, their, their, their points. And then we had um, Amnesty had like, you know, bring them here bands, you know, for refugees and sort of I was wearing one. And anyway, we ended up losing and I went backstage and it was just, I mean, back in the fucking sheds. Um, and, um, he was just, yeah, he was in his underpants. Both of us were just sweaty old men. 
You were in the showers, weren't you? Oh, well, well, you know, kind of, kind of thing, you know. Yeah, in the yeah, showers, yeah, yeah. Sweaty ball bags. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and um, yeah, he got, I, got, I went to Albo. I said, why were you wearing one of those? And then Albo goes, look, craps, it's not as easy as a three-word slogan, all right? And, uh, oh, <laughs> and another thing, there's rumour going around that uh, at your Enmore show, I was snorting cocaine with you boys. And uh, you know what? That's not cool, man. <laughs> I dare say that the, 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 I dare yeah, say I, the person I, who alleged I, I dare say the person who alleged that Albo was on the blow with stickies is the same person who alleged, you know, some of the other colourful stories about you guys as well. Look, we didn't we you know, for the record we didn't snort cocaine with Albo. But <laughs> yeah, we Albo were, d- yeah. Albo doesn't do bags, for for the record, let it be known. Yeah. I just want to know who his team is that found that out or thought that. that well, was I want to know who said it, who yeah. started it. Yeah. And, and then what, after he... After he <laughs> I was just consoling him, man. Yeah. Like, nah, yeah. mate, come on. We would never do that with you, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> and he's the Prime Minister now. That's huge. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah, but we're a pretty small country. Like, I really relate a lot to, like, that Simpsons episode where, like, you know, th- that you're coming down to, like, the, the pond and it's like, Oi! Mr. Oh, Prime yeah. Minister, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we had that, we had that flag up on the wall for a while. The boot, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. give him the boot. Should be the flag. Yeah, it's amazing. Should be. The flag. Yeah, it's it's accurate. It's yeah. so accurate. <laughs> Speaking of boots, I saw uh, on my ground that you did your first potential first shoey the other week. Is that right? Yeah. Did you release that? No, no. But I, I released it a, a candid well, preview. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. You've seen it. It's out, but it's not out how you're thinking. It's coming. Unbelievable. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just throw me and Albo under the bus, thanks. <laughs> yep. You've got to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Far Talk out. Talk about the shoey. Yeah, okay, go on. Yes, so you it saw was that. So, it was a solid <laughs> effort. You, you were going for it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is that uncharacteristic Let's of you, break. Jordan? He threw himself. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is what? that uncharacteristic of you? Yeah, dude, a that's shoey. so uncharacteristic. It was just because I was at a Gold Coast uh, a funny, gig, if you can show. call it that. And it was just, it's the Gold Coast. I know so the exact venue. We've played that venue several really? times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, called Blues yeah. Brothers shit. We were like 50 minutes into a set and I was like, would the owner of the pink Toyota <laughs> Prius please move the car? We have a new delivery of prawns and stencils coming in the back. Like, it's fully like that. <laughs> oh, like, like sound See, that's all the entertainment, cut. isn't it? <laughs> sound cut for the schnitzel delivery and it's like, it's like everything about the chicken wire fence in that joint. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can play something we know. Yeah. Dude, I was watching it and like, it was actually mental. I, I told him it was like the best show I've seen of his. This is in my opinion. Halfway through the show, he's doing the show. And then halfway, he just goes, nah, fuck it. I'm not doing the show. And I was like, what the fuck? He's like, I'm not doing the show anymore. And he's just like. On stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's yeah. just like, fuck it. Tell me about the Gold Coast. Give me some stories about the Gold Coast. And just. Shot the shit like a rowdy, like it was a rowdy pub with a bunch of random crowd working. Like, like it was a rowdy what? pub. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, it was. That <laughs> was it. Like there was no show to be had. I mean, for Christ's sake, so, like they interrupted a rock show. They interrupted a rock show to just be like, um, if you want to buy raffles, like you can't perform. This is not the opera house. Nothing no, in the Gold Coast. I mean, it's it's the Gold Coast equivalent of the opera house. On, on the same night, on the, the on the same show. Afterwards, that was when there was that kid who was underage and, like, he didn't get to see the show, but he wants to come meet the band and they'd sectioned us off that little hallway with, like, the, the empty fish tank <laughs> and, and, like, an empty esky of beers <laughs> and Beaker was there and he tried to be like, oh, oh, come, child, one day if you'll stick to the music, this could all be yours. <laughs> <laughs> and this kid looked around just like... <laughs> Just fr- frightened. <laughs> I, I, I think the next time we saw him, he was jamming like an amp in the back of his mum's Tarago that we used to tour in. And the kids just looking like, this, this is shit. <laughs> you know what? I'm not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I love, it's a, it's a I wild I just love thing. Bigamist. One day, kid, you're going to have all this. <laughs> those, those, like, did like you, at least you've got fish, you know, like. The, those like those like shit kicker <laughs> venues, man. Like you guys would have played heaps of them, I'm sure, but it's like 
They are they are mental. Like he just did a shoey. They were buying him shots. I think someone at some point said, "Stop doing the show or shut up or something." And they he was told just you like, to "Shut up." So they bought tickets to you, and then they told you to shut yeah. up. Yeah. No, no, they just wouldn't. They wouldn't shut up. They were just oh, talking right. the whole time, and I was just like, M- maybe like a basically what is a TED talk presentation on the intricacies of defamation law? <laughs> is it going to go down <laughs> well <laughs> in this venue, especially when like s- th- 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 someone had a baby there and it started crying halfway through, and I said. <laughs> Is that a baby? And a response. Does anybody was, have a microwave? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might just be me. I'm not. Don't want to put words in his mouth. Oh, <laughs> gonna make no sense on, now like, that we haven't shown that video. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to fill everybody in, uh, first off, you can sign up to the podcast to see the uh, official video in question, but the boys were showing us their uh, f- manufactured beef with Ocean Alley where they started singing Confidence Baby but replaced the lyrics Confidence Baby with It's a Microwave Baby. And, <laughs> and they put a very, very realistic yeah, toy <laughs> into the microwave. Yeah. Like your South African gangsters being like, just give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a South African accent? <laughs> I don't know. I just remember one of those guys doing that, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" I was glad I was born in this colony. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that place is fucked. <laughs> you got, you, <laughs> you got, have you have you toured? Have you toured sketch places or nah? It's all just like London, French. Yeah, you, well, that's it. No, we've, we've been to South Africa. We've been to South Africa. We went to Joburg. We got yeah, the tour. Okay, what was that like? That was actually mad. I thought that was really good. It was like a we we got we got the choice of going to the zoo or we got like a, a local to kind of drive us around Joburg, and basically just we were, we were sitting in the car and he's showing different parts of you know Soweto and ghetto parts of Joburg. But then he's um, fuck, what did he say? He um, we, we went past the toy show and we, to, toy store and we bought a bunch of soccer balls and and ca- right. candies and shit yeah. for the. For the the, the kids. Yeah, and then but then he was also like he was talking about after apartheid where all the white fucking racists went. And he goes, and a lot of them came to places like Australia. It's like, yeah, I know exactly where they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I've, 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 with I've been on the bus yeah. through Double Bay before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be getting a tour of South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really sorry about that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so what? It wasn't that bad. <laughs> wasn't that yeah, bad. Like it it wasn't actually like, yeah, that bad. I, I thought it was, I mean, you know, obviously it's got a pretty fucking recent hectic history, but it felt like it was really popping. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like it was really starting. You, you know what though? Like one of, <laughs> it was really starting there. One of, one of the more ghetto experiences, um, like what pops to mind for me was it was our, our first ever show outside of Sydney. And this was a point where like we were a lot more trim, like, and I had like a really... A really long hair and like like very skinny legs and like a bit bit more androgynous and less of like a sad old man I guess and like I remember we, we pulled up in Newcastle and I got out of the van with like my long hair and just the way I was dressed and I was like yeah I've never been to Newcastle I wonder what Newcastle's like and I got out of the van this Subi drives past and he goes fucking faggot and this <laughs> this pegs and egg and he goes Wait, is this, is this in Australia? Is this in Australia? Yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Newcastle. That is yeah. Newcastle. Yeah. Actually, you know yeah. what? I've been in Newcastle. Before for a gig that I was playing in a band, and I was just waiting. I think we were outside on the street after the, the show at the venue, and someone threw a bottle at us from the car and just smashed it at our feet. No, but you in Newcastle was yeah. point. Yeah, he he was doing it by going like, yeah, like it was like their official handshake. He was trying to be yeah. friendly. He wanted to bottle it. Yeah, it's such a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> it's, such, it's, it's awful. <laughs> It really is. I like, know some pretty good Newcastleans who have like managed to leave, you know? Yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. It's like it, my, my, my dog has no road sense, but then like you notice that like if you're driving down the road there's a pigeon or an Indian miner and, and they're like hobble out of the way and it's like no one's ever had to like – it's survival of the fittest, you know? They've had to – I don't know what the fuck I was going off that, but yeah. <laughs> what? No, you can't just end – is that the end? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay <laughs> all right. Thanks, Pat, for your contribution. Yes. <laughs> so, what, what you're saying is the fittest people from Newcastle managed to escape, managed to get head south, like the salmon swimming up the stream, right, kind yeah, of thing, right. to lay the most eggs. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, well, that was awesome. Like, you really should have been in that Triple J interview. You, they should have hired you when Dylan said that and just like, uh, what my client was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> that would have helped a lot. We didn't do nothing but. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, boys, we've got like five, about five more minutes. I yep. was going to uh, bring up the correlation, but you two do have a uh, shared professional history we haven't discussed here. Two ex male models. We, right. I wanted we, to touch on that and then whatever. <laughs> I, it had to be said. We do, and I, I actually appreciate you going there. Uh, Jordan, <laughs> Jordan, from memory, that was the first time we actually properly met was in Seoul, Korea. Yeah. Uh, in a modeling casting, which for the listeners, uh, that means it's, that's literally a comp. We were competing to be the best mannequin, which means that, you know, it's safe to say that there was no winners on that day. But I think um I think after that that we managed to bro down over there for the real reason that we were there, which was the modeling club. So do you oh, want, yeah. do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about how bloody good those places were? Oh yeah, well that those are the best, aren't they? Like it, it's look, it is great having these events set up so that rich businessmen can try and fuck young Russians and you, you get free booze on the side. Like it, is, it is not that bad. It's, it's a pretty good life. It's unreal. <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. So they're basically these clubs where um, it's like this, this economy where they basically want to get models in there um, and they, they get these uh, seedy kind of deep sea creature looking salary men yes. to uh, finance these bottles of Belvedere and they give them the ply the models with them and it's basically about getting girls in there but I think Jordan and I were lucky enough to get the kind of default ticket in there which may whereby we were just kind of around the girls and maybe friends with some of them and they wanted to have some guys there to feel a bit safer in the club yeah I'm assuming yeah something to that effect yeah I don't know why they were there but why we were there but anyway so we would get to go these clubs which were like Super fun. The, I, I believe it was uh, it was Club Eden where we managed to have a little fist pump together. Yeah. Um, which was Club. <laughs> it, it was in the heart of Gangnam, which and this was before <coughs> Gangnam style. But I like sure. to think through the mists of time that maybe we were helping to develop that dance a little bit, or maybe just blacking out on the free Belvedere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you coined it. You guys, look, we can claim that. You wrote it. You wrote yeah. the song. Can we go there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so, so Jordan and I were cool. We were creating Gangnam Style. But yeah, these clubs were like, they were cool because they had this kind of sense of danger where they had these, these kind of seedy businessmen l- circling the booth like sharks. And then there was also this underworld. A lot of them, uh, you, where did you model again? You modeled like in uh, a lot of Southeast Asia, right? South Asia, where did I go? Most of Asia, never got to Japan. They didn't like me. Uh, but, yeah, I think didn't most of Asia. So close. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I, 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 I got to some of the Japan ones, and they were all run by the Yakuza, which obviously made it a lot cooler. Like, it was just yeah. like the CD salarymen were, were just gross, but then it was like the Yakuza, like the most stylish mafia of all time, like impeccable suits. They're all around, and... I mean, yeah, I mean, ultimately, like, it was just pretty great. (laughs) I still don't know what you guys actually did. (laughs) We we just told you. That's what we did. That's what happened. Wait, start again. (laughs) That was it. (laughs) Where am I? (laughs) That's what you do. You just hang around a bunch of gangsters and and, and essentially prostitutes. That's that's what happens there. And then... Sometimes, every now and then, just out of nowhere, there's a, a shot of you just being like, new PlayStation. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's the job. But ultimately, it, it, was, it, was, it was about the clubs. I feel like that's why we were there. Huh? We were there for the clubs, right? Yeah, totally. Like, that was a great way to um, just, I, I don't know. Like, I think as a male model, that's all you can get until you get about 40 and then you can make a living out of it. But until then, you are just scraping around clubs. And living off the alcohol and pretzels. Living off free Belvedere. <laughs> yeah. So it's really funny. weird just being at the orbit. As a male model, usually, yeah. Right. And unless you're like the absolute elite in like uh, Europe or something, women just make insane money. That was so 
annoying having all these like loud Brazilian women just be like, I just made twenty thousand dollar. My mama in the favela can have the transplant. It's just like I don't want to deck twenty grand. And we're, we're sitting on like we're sitting on like twenty dollar catalog rates, like day rates yeah. twenty bucks. We're like, oh, that can't be right. <laughs> no, but I think just chicks just sell more clothes. Like it's a big. They sell industry. more clothes. Yeah, the only thing that you get as a guy is when you are old enough to be like a silver fox. A George Clooney, like sell selling cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. Like Nespresso. Nespresso, Nespresso machine. cigarettes yeah, yeah. in jeeps, and that's a killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. that's it. So we never got to taste the pepper. Pepper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's me- that's mentally you both met over there for the first time. That's correct. I didn't know that. Yeah, I I think I knew that we had some like <coughs> mutual mates like Gabe and stuff, but I think that was the first time we properly met from memory. Yeah, I think so too, but I can't remember it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't. All I can remember is just a blur of clubs. That was it. It's amazing that you have that. Yeah, the Belvedere does do a number on your memory. <laughs> yeah. Evidently, because I was just like, I was in Gangnam, you know, like, that's <laughs> crazy. Boys. Um, unless you guys wanted to close on anything, do you want to stick around for the up late? You can? Yeah, One more. honestly, why not? Yeah. I can't remember from like the, the, the exclusive Patreon while Jordan was like circling around the block in his, in his, um, in his motorcade yeah. while he was offering us those corned beef sandwiches in the lobby. <laughs> I can't it's remember if on this section we actually... Told the people that Nelson had written this book or not? Did we have we that? talked <coughs> about the? I can't even remember. I don't know. I think yeah, I think we mentioned like we Jordan's did, we time did. in Korea. Yeah, yeah, we did. We Just did. in case we didn't, Nelson wrote this book about our band, and you yeah. can get it. And Hell thanks yeah, for having us. Plug it properly, Nelson. Plug, plug hard. Plug yeah, away. well, uh, take this. And I reckon we can maybe show it to the camera when the up late. We can do something like that. But um, yeah, it's out now. Give us the plug. It Ellie. was great. I've read it, and it was. Bloody a breeze. It is a wild ride. I just read, like, it was mad. It was really interesting. There's a lot of pictures. Which is always good. Which helps. Yeah, yeah, it's always helpful. <laughs> yeah, cheers, boys. Nah, so... <laughs> so good. <laughs> just denigrating it to a picture book. <laughs> cheers, boys. Cut, cut all the words that I wrote <laughs> out for you and just stuck pictures everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't agree to that shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, boys, I'm, I'm not much of a plugger, but... uh. You know, Belly of the Beast, available now. Uh, and thank you so much for having us. And just lastly, I'd like to also give a shout out to uh, Forest Hall and everybody let's run up the numbers on their latest <laughs> single, Finding Out on Accident. That's very sweet of you, young man. <laughs> and uh, but, also Rip Millsy as well. Oh, uh, cheers, yeah, yeah, cheers, yeah. man. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Lovely bloke. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, um, yeah, no, thanks, boys. Thanks heaps for coming down. And we'll, ca- yeah, thanks for tuning in. Stick around for the up late. Join the Patreon. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Cheers, everyone. Peace. Thanks, I don't guys. know what you just said.